how are you doing today? My name is Gordon and this is my YouTube channel. Welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. Today I have another intricate, in-depth eye makeup tutorial for you guys. I've created this pink graphic gradient sharp glitzy eye makeup, I don't know what to call this, <laughs> um, but it's a very in-depth makeup tutorial. It's probably one of the most intricate makeup looks I've personally ever done and I'm absolutely in love with this makeup look. If you like the look of what's on my eyes and you'd like to see how to do it, don't go anywhere and I'll teach you step by step every tip, tool, product to create this eye makeup look. But if you're liking the vibe of this video already and you're liking what I'm giving you, it would be great if you could subscribe. And while you're there, you might as well click the bell as well because that'll let you know exactly when I upload that new video and you'll be able to see it first. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and learn something new and cool. Without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to my pause. We're going to have a big zoom in and I'm going to take you through every single step of this eye makeup look. Makeup free gold, take it away. Well, hello. How weird does this look? <laughs> so obviously I've got one eye on. I decided to do one eye off camera, firstly because I wanted to make sure I absolutely nailed it for you guys. And secondly, I want to keep this video as short as possible, but as detailed as possible. By just teaching you on one side, I'm able to share more with you. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of eyebrow grooming. As you can see, my brows look much fuller on this side. I like a nice fluffy eyebrow. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the Pink Honey Brow Pot. This is very similar to brow soap, but I find it to be more translucent so you don't get little white flakes on the skin. And I find it to be a better hold as well so I absolutely love this product. So I'm taking it on a clean mascara wand and beginning to run this product through the eyebrow. I'm going to make sure every single hair is coated before I worry about the direction that they're brushed in and to wake up the product inside the jar make sure that your mascara wand is a little bit damp with some setting spray or even water. So now that I'm happy with how much is within the eyebrow I'm going to begin to style the hairs. So obviously you can tailor the direction that your hairs are grown in to whatever you fancy and whatever you prefer. I like them brushed straight up just like a brow lamination. If you want to help the drying process along, use a fan. I'm now going to take a clean finger and with a little bit of pressure begin to smooth these hairs to the skin. So this is going to lock in the product and give you a lovely smooth shiny brow. It's really 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 going to lock the style in place. And I do recommend that you do this as a first step so you're not removing any of your makeup when you do this. Lovely, so we're going to begin to prime the eye. To begin, I'm going to use the Lay and Low Paint Pot from MAC. This is a long wear waterproof product, it's amazing. And this Lay and Low colour is a little bit deeper and a little bit peachier than my skin. And to fluff it through my crease, I'm going to use a brush from Beauty Bay. This brush is called Round the Blend. I'm applying a tiny bit of this product to the brush and I'm going to begin to work it into my crease, just like I would an eyeshadow. A nice, light, thin layer. I'm not worrying too much about my lid. I'm not worrying too much about taking it up to the brow bone, but definitely making sure there's a good amount of coverage within the crease, within this inner corner, and out towards the temple. And build this up in tiny, thin layers until you're really happy with the coverage and that you've corrected any veins or any blue tones on the eye, and your eye space is just really blank and ready for some eyeshadow and make sure there's no harsh lines where the eye base ends, it should just fade into the natural skin tone. So that's our eyes primed, we're now going to shape the brow. So to shape and highlight the arch of the brow, I'm going to use a Mitchell Acid Rain Paint in the shade Blank Canvas. I'm going to take that on my Zoeva Soft Concealer Brush. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this on the back of my hand. So we're just going to focus on the arch of the brow, so to begin with we're going to ignore the front third of the eyebrow. I'm going to create short little connecting strokes with very very light pressure with the very tip of my sharp brush. I'm now taking a clean synthetic pencil brush and beginning to use little short strokes to feather this new eye base down into the MAC paint pot softly. I'm going to go between this brush and my previous brush from Beauty Bay until I get a lovely gradient from this brow highlight into my deeper eye base. So now I'm swapping to my previous brush that will have excess MAC paint pot on it and using it to further soften the edges of this gradient. Both products that I've used to dry very quickly and very matte, so I'd recommend doing one eye at a time. And this is a step that I recommend that you really practice and nail, because anything you put below it's going to look more polished. So now we're going to begin with the eyeshadow. I'm going to be working mostly from the Be Perfect in Stacey Marie Carnival XL Pro palette today. The first brush I'm going to use is this tiny, dinky, angled, small eyebrow brush from Anastasia, and we're going to dip into the shade Reckless, and we're going to map out our corners. So starting on the bottom lash line, I'm going to begin to apply this lovely deep rich plum shade. It's a lovely smoky plum, this one's called Reckless from that Be Perfect palette. 
By starting on the bottom lash line, we're going to get a perfect connection from top eyeshadow to bottom eyeshadow and make sure this angle is absolutely perfect. Now with my eyes completely relaxed, I'm going to map out the angle of my eyeshadow. Make sure it connects to your bottom lash line and that it maps the angle on the other side. If you map out your shape with your eye relaxed, you'll get a perfect shape. If you raise your eyebrows while you're mapping this out, you're gonna get a lovely shape and then your eyebrows are gonna drop and you're gonna relax your face and you're gonna lose the lift of the eye then. So make sure you're doing this step with your eye completely relaxed. And when I'm mapping this out, I'm making sure that I'm plotting out all of this shape on all of my visible space on my eye. And now I'm going to work on making sure that this inside line is nice and crisp. And if you make sure that the negative space and the inside of this shape is nice and crisp, you've got even less work to do later when we clean this up. So I'm just going to neaten up all of my lines now. And now that we've got our mapped out guide, you can stretch up your eyebrows if you want to, just to make that eye space nice and tight. So I'm going to do the same on this inner corner, using little bits of eyeshadow at a time, so I've got more control. I'm trying to keep my face nice and relaxed. I'm going to plot out the angle of this inner corner. So your mapping out should look something like this, so we've got all of our angles and lines to work on now. We're now going to start to build up this lovely neon pink smokiness we've got on the outer corner of the eye. The first brush I'm going to use is from Eco Tools. This is a lip blur brush. And using the shade Persuasion from that Stacey Marie palette, I'm going to begin to sit this colour on top of that line and break up the edges of that smoky plum shade. So I'm using little bits of eyeshadow at a time and staying really close to that shape. And it's not about blending at this moment, it's about breaking up your edges. So there should be a little soft blur of this lighter pink all around the outer edge of this shape. Leave the inside as crisp and neat as possible. You can bring it down onto the bottom lash line. And again, have the brush half on that line of plum and half on the clean eyeshadow base. And just keep adding this colour softly with very light pressure with this lip blur brush until you start to see a little bit of a haze around all the edges and you see the two colours start to mix. So now I'm going to pick up no more eyeshadow. I'm going to go back to our previous brush and using whatever plum is on that brush, I'm going to start to do little flicks up from the line to try and blend this plum shade into the shade Persuasion. So I'm just doing tiny little short strokes on the skin to try and blur and fade out this line from one colour to another and get a better gradient. You can go between that Eco Tools brush, this brush, add in more shadow if you need to until you get a lovely blend from dark to light begin to happen. I'm now taking the synthetic pencil brush in the shade Wasted from the palette. I'm going to begin to break up the edges of that Persuasion shade. So again, we want to add a purple glow around the edges, but we don't want to blend. We want the edges to be a little bit softened, but it's more about adding the colour at this stage and trying to get all the colours to kind of merge together and sandwich well. Naturally, the shape should be getting bigger and bigger and more exaggerated when you add each colour. You shouldn't just be layering these colours right bang on top of each other, but they should be overlapping just a little bit. And if it looks a little bit of a weird mess at this moment, you're probably doing it right. So I'm picking up a bit of Persuasion on our previous brush, that Eco Tools brush, and making sure it goes from berry into purple. And then I'll pick up that Anastasia eyebrow brush and reapply our Reckless shade. And I'll keep going in with these three stages until they're looking seamless. I'm now going to take the shade Funky from the palette, and this is a blank canvas E10 brush, and this is when the blend's going to start to happen. I'm going to begin to softly introduce this neon pink to the edges of our purple blend. And this is the colour that finishes things off, this softens the edges, and this blends all of these crazy colours into the skin. So you can really blow out and pull out the edges of this shape with this pink colour because it's the final colour of the blend. I'm now going to take a clean Anastasia brush and dip into the shade Lights Out from the palette, which is the black, and just take this along the very, very crisp edge. I'm now going to take my other Anastasia brush that's got the excess Reckless on and do little short light pull down strokes to blend that black into the plum. Just flick it up. When we get to the top of the shape here, taking that Eco Tools Lip Blur brush, go 
going around the edges of that newly added colour. Again, you just want to always make sure that everything's super connected and that you can't see any harsh lines from one colour to another. I'm now going to take an angled eyeliner brush from Medallion Tools. I picked up a little bit of that blank canvas paint from the back of my hand and I'm going to begin to clean up that inside edge. I'm going to map it out a smaller version of this outside shape. So again, tiny bits of eyeshadow at a time. And with the excess that's on the brush, begin to feather your edges in. Using the short little strokes you used to pull these colours outwards, we're now going to pull them inward onto the lid. Going back to my Eco Tools Lip Blur Brush, we're going to take the shade Persuasion and use this to begin lightening up our gradient and softening our blend. If you want to change your shape or sharpen up at all, go back to your shade Reckless. And just like we did on the outside here, we're trying to get a lovely gradient from this dark plum into the purple, into the pink. Our lip blurring brush again from Eco Tools, and a little bit of persuasion. Picking up a little bit of wasted now. So it should go from reckless into persuasion, into wasted, and then into the bright pink. And just keep working with these three brushes and these three shades until you get this lovely gradient starting to happen. I'm now taking Funky on a clean Zoeva pencil brush. And this is going at the very, very front of the blend. And I'm just softening all the edges of the eyeshadow base and the shadow blend. I'm now dipping into the black again, which is called Lights Out. And then back to our Anastasia brush that has the plum on, that reckless shade, and making sure that black is nice and soft. I'm really, really happy with this, it's looking fab. We're now going to fill in this lovely negative space here, this beige line we've got going on the outer corner. We're going to use a Glam Crystals liner from Collection in the shade Sunset Pink. And you definitely do not want to be speaking when you do this. I'd advise really wiping off the brush and do a little bit at a time, and I would layer this product twice. Lovely, so for now that's the whole outside of the eye complete, we're now going to work on the smoke and the cut of the inner corner. So similar to the other side, we're going to pick up the Eco Tools brush, that lip blur brush, and pick up Persuasion from the palette, and begin to blend out and blur the edges of the mapping out we did earlier. I'm now using a little bit of Wasted to add a purple glow, going back to Persuasion, and then picking up Funky on our blank canvas brush, that E10 brush, and beginning to blend and soften the edges. Again, it really doesn't start to come together until you add the pink. That's what really softens the edges and makes it look blended. Going back to Wasted. You can really start to see these colours blending into one another now. And then I've dipped into a little bit of Reckless to make sure this inner corner is really, really dark. The darker you make the inner corner, when you cut it, it's going to look even sharper and even brighter. I'm now adding lights out, that black on the very, very, very inner corner. And then using whatever excess I've got on this brush that's got Reckless on it to blur the edges of the black into the brighter colours of the blend. I'm now going to begin to cut the inside shape of the eye. So before I do any crisp, bold lines, I'm going to map the shape out smaller and rougher than I would like. Right, so I'm happy with how things are looking so far. I'm going to quickly fill in the lid. Now we've got our rough filled in shape, I'm going to begin to sharpen up and crisp up those edges. So again, I'm using the soft concealer brush from Zoeva and I'm going to punch in the edges with the tip of my brush. So I'm shaping the brush into the product on the back of my hand so it's really skinny and sharp and I'm just basically stamping the edge of the cut crease into the lid. Now taking our clean pencil brush and again just feathering and softening the edges of that new eye base into our previous shadow on the other side and making sure nothing's harsh. And make sure there's a nice clean gap in between the two different blends we did. And make sure there's a lovely separation for the glitter to sit within. So to add a point to this cut lid, we're going to go back to that little Bedellian Tools eyebrow brush we used. And again, I'm just going to use little pushing and stamping techniques into the skin to keep the line nice and sharp. When using a matte product like this, you don't want to drag across the skin because you'll get bumps. I 
I'm going to take a little bit of the Mitchell paint and pop it inside of my eye, the nude waterline. I'm now going to take a teeny tiny flat brush and take some black eyeshadow, apply it underneath this point to sharpen it up. And whatever eye base is left on our flat brush, I'm going to take in the centre of the bottom lash line. Just using my fluffy brush to blend that out, picking up a little bit of funky and using that to transition into the beige, I'm doing this on both sides. Using a little bit of that purple shade wasted to give us a better transition from black into purple into pink into nude into pink into purple into black. Lush, so I'm going to go back to our Glam Crystals liner and we're going to fill in all of our inner corner and front half of the lid. So now it's time for my favourite part, the pigment. We're going to create a lovely diffused glow down the centre panel of the lid that just disappears up into the eyebrow. I'm going to use a little bit of the Doll Beauty Pigment Popper to prime the eye, ready for the pigment. I'm going to take a very small amount of that and work it into a fluffy brush. And then I'm going to lightly tap across the centre of the lid, slightly over into our shiny inner corner and slightly over into our matte shadows. So there's a very thin coat of tackiness throughout the whole of the centre of the lid space. And then with the same brush, I'm going to apply a pigment called Sis from Soul Sister Cosmetics. It's white but reflects like a fuchsia purple, it's gorgeous. Apply it to the centre of the lid first, and then I'm going to let the zigzag left to right, break up the edges of the sparkle, and just watch it diffuse into nothing. I'm going to pick up a little bit of our bright neon pink called Funky on a pencil brush. This one's from Zoeva. I'm going to bring back that gradient that we had from dark to light on the lid. Lovely, so off camera I'm going to apply top and bottom eyelashes. My top lashes are called Candy and they're from Prima Lashes. And my bottom lashes are from Eldora and they're S407. So once I've applied those lashes, I'll come back and show you how I'll fill in my brows. Okay guys, so that's the lashes applied. I am absolutely in love. These two paired together are so nice because they're both the same amount of like spiky and clumpy. The bottom lashes are super easy to apply. You apply them before mascara and they come in little individual clusters that you stick on underneath your own lashes and then you apply your mascara and this is the look that you get. I'm absolutely obsessed. So now we're going to finish this eye look with the perfect eyebrow. So I don't want to fill in the brow too much. I still want to have lovely fluffy texture to the brow but just crisping up the bottom edge of the eyebrow so it frames the eye makeup better. To do that I'm going to use my Beloved Browsing's Pro Palette from Benefit and I'm going to use the Middle Brow Gel from the Medium Deep Set. And using, believe it or not, my third Anastasia eyebrow brush for this makeup look, I'm going to begin to work along the edge of that brow carving that we did at the beginning of the eye makeup and work in brow hair strokes. So all of this lovely depth and texture we can see here, we're trying to bring it right down to that concealer line. So with the brows filled in, the eyes are now complete. Okay guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope you've learned something new and cool with me today. If you've enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you could subscribe. I've really enjoyed having you around and, you know, I would have you back. I would have a second date. If you recreate this look or do anything similar, please do tag me. I would love to see your recreations and all of your work on Instagram. And if you've got any ideas about future videos you'd like to see from me, please do write a comment below. I'm always in the comments, always replying, and I'd love to hear your feedback. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Hope to see you in the next one. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See you later, guys. Bye.